architects, or as space architects, we've been going off of a, uh, of a road map that uh, uh, Mark and uh, Chris Kennedy at uh, Johnson Space Center put together that calls for three phases. One is uh, pre-integrated structures, which are um, completely assembled and tested in one piece on uh, Earth and delivered into place in, in, a, in a usable form. The second phase are uh, what we call uh, either fa fabric prefabricated or kit of parts uh, systems, which uh, need to have some assembly required once they get on, on site. Then the third phase is uh, in situ uh, resource uh, structures, which uh, obviously will uh, use some of the native materials or um, otherwise uh, take advantage of, of the materials that you find on the site. And hopefully there will be um, some gray areas between each of these, of course, whether uh, you'll always have uh, uh, pieces that are being delivered from Earth uh, to, to fit into the various systems. This particular work is uh, done under the kit of parts, the phase two, um, as a, um, and also pre-integrated, pre so we have a little bit of both there. When we, when we talk about kit of parts, um, we talk about uh, pre-engineered, pre-designed uh, set of pieces, somewhat similar to, in terms of going around, there's the Lego people are here, I guess, uh, a Lego set where you have a lot of uh, specific pieces that are, that are prepared in advance that can be assembled together in, in a, a variety of ways, the, uh, the joints, the uh, uh, the ways of connection, power, etc., are all extremely flexible so that the, the various configurations can be put together um, in, in, in a variety of ways and not necessarily in one mission specific way. Okay? So uh, we've broken this down into categories for joint based, panel based, module based, and deployable. So in this particular paper, <coughs> some of the uh, things that we, the principles that we considered are uh, separate but integrated, pre-integrated functions, and uh, post-integrated functions. When we're talking about separate but integrated, uh, this is what allows for the great deal of flexibility where you have uh, a systematic way of putting the interface together, but they can be um, demounted and mounted again in, in a different, an entirely different configuration for a great deal of uh, flexibility in uh, <coughs> like, like the term plug and play or re reuse. Pre integrated systems, uh, these are just a few, few bullet points. Uh, advantages uh, are that they're fully pre tested and, pre and fully functional. But some of the disadvantages are is that they're, uh, they're inflexible for other uses, and um, since they're mission specific, they, um, they're usually discarded for, uh, they can't really be used for, for other uh, future different, uh, different missions. Post integrated, or the, the kit of parts approach, is uh, where you have uh, extremely flexible, reconfigurable parts. Multi-use, they're more compact because uh, you're able to collapse a lot of the, uh, especially in, in uh, human habitable spaces, you have a lot of space in habitats that where the, the humans dwell. It's just empty space. And if you're able to use uh, various uh, deployable techniques, etc., you can collapse a lot of the space so that you have just the basic core elements uh, when you're shipping the, the uh, habitat and deploy the space once you get on the site. Uh, some of the advantages, or the disadvantages are that uh, you have a lot more joints, these, these uh, standardized joints, you have to protect those against uh, the uh, harsh grains uh, uh, and uh, uh, different particles in that, that, are, that are airborne or otherwise just on the surface that you have 
there. And uh, multiple mechanical joints, depending on how they're designed, there's, there's a, a lot more uh, opportunities for things to go wrong. So uh, in the context of this study, we, we did uh, two separate but uh, slightly related uh, studies on uh, integration but separation. So you have a, a, a complete separation of, of function, but the but the uh, they're completely integrated in their system and interface. The first one is uh, it's a highly conceptual a layered facade uh, idea that uh, is is actually in, in terrestrial architecture. It's uh, it's it's a current. Uh, uh, very popular um, technology that, that we are using to uh, increase uh, uh, energy efficiency and uh, uh, response to the environment that the building is in. And uh, I'll, I'll go through just a few, few reasons for, uh, for why we're, uh, this particular study is uh, advocating uh, a layered facade. The second project is what we call the Mobitat, and it is uh, it's, uh, in response to the Habot, and it's just a very simple, very highly conceptual, uh, wheel-based mobile, mobile system for a <coughs> plug in uh, a pressure vessel. So the, uh, I, I'm sorry I don't have that many um, uh, visuals for the, for the uh, double skin system, but the idea is that, um, some of, some of our uh, colleagues, space architect colleagues, uh, have been uh, doing a lot of studies using uh, inflatables. And inflatables, the advantage of that is if you're able to uh, collapse the wall of the structure and get rid of some of these spaces during uh, transport, but then once, it, once you're on site, you can deploy and recreate the spaces for the living spaces. Now, the, uh, in our study, what we, we looked at the various uh, reasons for the skin of the pressure vessel, and, and the literal the name it, it, uh, um, refers to a difference of pressure. Now, the difference of pressure, um, for instance, on the moon, you from zero to to the uh, the habitable pressure on the inside. Um, can be done with an inflatable bladder or an inflatable membrane. A lot of the other reasons for the wall and for the, uh, the outer skin of the, of the pressure vessel are for um, radiation shielding, uh, micrometeor meter protection, and things like that that don't necessarily have to have a, a, a seamless uh, protection like, like the pressure bladder needs to be. And so for this particular, for this reason, we thought, well, if we uh, maintain a, a, a double skin where you're always, uh, you always have a pre-integrated uh, pressure vest, uh, bladder on the inside, and then have a kit of parts, uh, panelized joint system or whatever on the outside for the, uh, for the major um, shielding elements, then uh, there might be a, a way of, uh, of really uh, collapsing the, uh, the volume that these take up for, to make a minimum of, uh, of volume for, for shipping and for um, trans transport. Now this, this particular diagram is just a very simple uh, diagram showing how um, if you have uh, a, a pressure bladder that uh, is hypothetically, it, it can only be manufactured to a certain size, that it's completely manufactured on Earth, it's tested on Earth, and then delivered to the, uh, to the site, then uh, you can have multiple of these, uh, these pressure uh, bladders, but still have an economy of the outer shielding, because you don't need to put the, uh, uh, in other words, on the diagram on the left, you have, uh, you have six spaces that need to be to protect that ladder from all sides. However, the diagram on the right, you can you can remove.
move two of those. So, it, so the more that you put these together, the, uh, the more economy it becomes. So it's, it's just a very, a very simple um, study that we did um, advocating the separation yet integration of these functions. Okay, the, the, uh, the next, the Bobatap, Mark showed you this uh, diagram earlier. The, uh, the thing that we were concerned about on this is uh, having these jointed legs and having the, the, the incredible exposure to all of the, the, uh, uh, the dust and everything that you'd find on the surface in all of the joints of this of this uh, robot, and also you can just see this thing walking across and getting the the, uh, the inhabitants will get dizzy awful quick because this thing will just be rocking back and forth. It's sitting on the bottom, and this this uh, module is uh, is on the top in in a very uh, um, the farther you get from those legs, the more swing you'll have. Okay. So in the, the, the MOBITAP, we uh, came up with just a very quick study of, uh, of, a, of a kinematic system where I, that, that has a, a highly uh, developed suspension system that will keep the, uh, it, its uh, top arm deployed, a, a completely co a, a compact and in the uh, in the payload bay, but then when you uh, when you swing all of the pieces out, you, you deploy the system using uh, perhaps the the, um, the multi-layered uh, pressure vessel that I talked about earlier. Then uh, you're able to uh, deploy a system that um, has a very uh, high performance on slopes and. Uh, and the ability to keep this uh, this module completely level at all times. And the reason for this is because it's top hung in order to maintain a level stance. Um, the, one of the, um, the thing that Mark didn't show on his is the Habot uh, is able to connect up to create a larger uh, bases. Now, Mark mentioned the fact that uh, with three pressure ports on each one of these modules, you, you're going to start to lose the, the functionality of these spaces. So this, this obviously needs a lot more study. Another thing that, that it needs study is uh, in uh, traditional architecture, safety, safety, egress is one of the most important things. And egress is where you, is, uh, where you have, from any particular module, you have to have two ways of escaping in case of an emergency or a fire or something like that. And so you would need to have, uh, to set up from each one of these modules, at least have, uh, have two openings to uh, provide this egress. Um, so integration plus sep uh, separated but integrated. Um, let me, I'll go back to this one in a minute here. Separated but integrated, uh, this particular concept will be able to drop off the module, put it into place, and then you can use the, uh, the platform itself not only as a, as a uh, rover, but also as a platform for, for mounting uh, uh, cranes, drilling equipment, etc., cetera, and, uh, and have it be uh, teleoperated for any kind of field work that you would need to, need to be done. Okay, this is just a, a quick diagram showing the uh, <coughs> Uh, the double skin, where you have a, a, a pressure, an inflatable pressure bladder on the inside, and then uh, a hard protective shell that is uh, a kit of parts panelized system on the outside. Um, I, I'll act, actually show this uh, particular diagram in my next presentation of the second paper later, and uh, and show some additional um, uh, insights on on this. And uh, that concludes this paper. Are we in time for it? Okay, so, I'll, so what I'll do is I'll take uh, 10 minutes for questions and then uh, I'll set up my next presentation. Which... I have a question. Yes. I want to know what the blue cylinders are on the top of those headlights that you and Mark are going to show. Mark's going to have to answer that.
that? Those, those, are, those are photovoltaic cells. That's for use during the lunar day. Are they collecting sideways? Yeah. They're basically like a huge satellite, which you're spun and has um, cells on, on the side of the cylinder. Uh, it, it, whichever way it turns, it's going to pick up some direct should sunlight. Be, I should think a dome would work better than a cylinder. And flat panel or tracking flat panels. Yeah, would be the tracking best. flat panels is what I would have Tracking flat panels. That would be, yeah, that would be the most efficient use of the, of the mass. My guess is that's probably a, an artist's um, it's free license. Yeah, somebody, somebody had an idea of this. I thought maybe it, 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 when they gathered to collect it together, it looked like superstructure replacing something on top of them. Well, the, the studies we need to do in the next year or two are, are the mobility system and the energy system. Actually, in the next uh, the next paper I'm going to present, it's a it's a it's a, uh, a panelized system, and uh, that will contain that. So so, so we have uh, there's a lot of studies that have been done using inflatables, um, and uh, the inflatables are attention, but uh, the the issue you have with flat wall is all if your force is located basically right in this area here, you have a wall. So that's the question: is have, have you Considering the materials that you're using, have you looked at the, can they have the pressure, uh, what you need to, to do that? Yeah, so, so the panelized system that I'll show next might answer a little bit of that question. So I'll just defer that. Are you going to be around for the next? Okay. Scott, have you had any thought about how to deal with the lunar dust and all the, the moving parts of the, the lunar system? Have you got all the deployables and yeah, the, uh, that's a big issue, and that's going to be one of the, the studies that we'll have to do um, coming up. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the kit of part system has a lot of joints. You have more joints for dust to get into and things like that, and so that's one of the things we're really going to have to concentrate on, uh, on how to protect those joints. The panelized system that I'm going to tell you about next is uh, self-assembly, and so um, that's going to be... Um, a critical issue, the most critical issue, I think, is the dust more than um, the, uh, I think the pressure is handled. Any more questions? Should we wait five minutes to get started? Uh, ten minutes, you have to wait ten minutes. I'll, uh, give you minutes uh, yeah, Scott, um, what is the uh, energy system that you're using there to make those wheels go? Yeah, so essentially I'm not touching that at all. What, what I've done is I've just got, done a kinematic study. I've, I've gone and uh, I've identified what kinds of uh, actuators are, are needed and uh, the, uh, the actual uh, kinematic uh, functionality of, of either going up slopes or stepping over large obstacles. One, one diagram I didn't show is it is able to uh, step over obstacles and then shift its weight while keeping the, uh, the module level. And so um, I'm just assuming that that would um, use the same either microwave uh, power or, or whatever. That and, and, and do you actuate for the, for the wheels to act as landing legs? Well, um, that was one possibility. Let me just, that's a good, a good question. We, on, on, a, on a study that the student that we did is, uh, we have uh, this configuration of having two two motors off to the side. Um, however, conventional wisdom says that uh, the motors should be um, instead of being concentric, they should be um, off right through the center, and so yeah, ax axis. So. Um, this was just a quick study, and uh, I, I don't I don't don't think that portion of the of the project would be it would it would need to do some um, redesign on that. Right, but does it does it land on those directly on those wheels? That was what the original idea was. Um, I do not have that diagram in here. 
but uh, it could land on a, uh, on a sloped surface, is, is what we are. Uh, that, 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 that's awfully a lot more ambitious than I mean, we're, the, the whole idea of a landing zone is you look for your flattest, smoothest, best known surface and you land there. And, and then if you want to go up a, a slope, fine. But it looks like you have about a 50 degree slope there. It looks like it's steeper than 45 degrees. That, that's you know, far more ambitious than any requirement I think any scientist could ever lay on us. So we're safe. Hopefully, yeah. Another question here. Yes. Two more questions. Well, if you wanted those solar arrays to work, all you have to do is put a trough underneath so at high noon you could get some power out. Oh, uh, mirrors, yeah. Reflect the light up. Yeah, so that's, so that's your answer for that, yeah. the towers. Did you have a question? Could you tell us oh. about the student who proposed this? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, well, um, it wasn't just the student um, did, a, did some of the uh, we worked on it together, of course. But the student uh, is a uh, student at uh, Hong Kong University. is one of my uh, grad students and was not able to come to this uh, work uh, conference at this time. Um, the student, um, it wasn't the student's thesis project, so <laughs> she didn't get funding, or he didn't get funding. Is that what you wanted to know? Yes. And one other question is, have you reviewed uh, Carnegie Mellon's work of the Hamler back in the early 90s? Pardon? Carnegie Mellon designed and built a six-legged walking rover back in the early 90s called Hamler. Are you familiar with what they did? Yeah, I've, I've uh, seen a lot of Carnegie Mellon's work, but I don't recall the names, so I, I, I don't know which one. But it was pretty large. And, you, know, you were able to go over pretty flat. And keep it and keep it rocks without elevating it. And, and keep the uh, the body uh, level. Yeah. Is that what it was? Yeah. But it was a six legged. Just out like of curiosity, what why the emphasis on level? Because I've been on a horse and going downhill, I wasn't level. Yeah, it's just a. Uh, <coughs> uh, in, in case you're doing uh, work at the same time. Uh, it, it was just a requirement that we put into our little study. That's all. So uh, the, the, um, the, the biggest thing when I saw that Havoc picture, I just I just saw that thing swinging back and forth terribly. And uh, well, typically, if you're in something that's moving, you not do the work. Uh, if you try try cooking in a capital while it's moving, that's pretty stable. If you're going over a road, you really wouldn't want to do it, guy. Yeah. Yeah, well, it, it's, we haven't really determined the degree of shake, rattle, and roll that would be acceptable, like, except we don't want to expose all the components to a huge amount of, 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 of that type of uh, insult over an over extended period of time. Scott, if, if the cab is going to rotate in uh, concert with the, the angle change, would it not set up a swinging motion? Well, what you would do is uh, you would just have to have, uh, it, um, you dampen it, of course, and just have, um, the, the, since it's, uh, it's hung, it's a lot easier to do that than if it was mounted on the bottom. 
Is it naturally just, just using the uh, axis of the solution I could find. <laughs> well, let me go ahead and start the, I'll do the next one. Well, um, wait a few minutes, it's not, it's not yet oh, 4 o'clock. Okay. No, look at your watch. Uh, it says four. It's no. much too fast. Yeah. Let's get started. Um, and I think Scott needs no introduction. I haven't seen your faces. No, this one's not. Raise your hand if you'd like. Mine did this. Here, sitting right over there. Scott is just doing it. Scott, you want to tell us anything? Well, I'm just going to. Uh, this uh, yeah, next sure. lecture is. Uh, Again, it's uh, a kit of parts. Uh, I specialize in kit of parts, uh, building systems, and um, and robotics in construction. This the second part is uh, was a, a couple of studies that are that are connected to not only uh, my space architecture research but also the uh, uh, terrestrial architecture research, uh, stemming from the, some of the work that I've done in Japan. Um, and this is a uh, Assume that uh, you have the pressure vessel as the major, uh, the primary structure, and then you have uh, secondary structures that will support that. And uh, that's kind of the way that we, we uh, pair these two papers. Again, I, uh, the, the beginning of these, it just goes through based on the same uh, the kit of parts uh, idea. The principles that I'm going to talk about in here are. Uh, uh, self-constructing elements, self-leveling, compact storage, multi-layered, etc. This is this is uh, uh, building a little bit on uh, on what uh, uh, Silvano talked about earlier, and we we've, we've uh, had a lot of conversations about about this. Silvano's work is uh, had to do with a uh, um, a conceptual robot that. It wasn't necessarily um, geared toward any specific uh, purpose, uh, as far as uh, architecture or, or whatever. But this uh, is taking some of the concepts that Silvano has worked with and actually applying it to architecture or habitable uh, structures. Um, one of the so, so uh, uh, I'll introduce a couple systems uh, um, that uh, we're working on that uh, that are taking. Uh, Collapsible architectural elements and providing a, uh, a standard interface such that these can be put together on site using automation, having be their, their self climbing and self assembling uh, systems. The other thing that's important for uh, for having an automated uh, a secondary structure is to have uh, self self leveling. 
and then uh, also have these, uh, these pieces be uh, foldable and, uh, and compact such that uh, they, again, collapse all uh, unnecessary space and, uh, and just leave the, uh, the very core elements in, it in, a, in a very compact form, which later, once they're brought to the site, they can be opened up and deployed. And, and again, this, uh, this diagram that I showed you earlier um, is a, an example of that, where you have a panelized system on the outside, and then uh, a collapsible, uh, inflatable system on the, on the, uh, that, that actually functions as the pressure barrier. And the, uh, the, the outer panelized system then um, can perform the functions of, uh, of uh, uh, radiation protection, uh, micrometeor meteorite protection, and uh, scuffing, bumping, different things like that, uh, without having to have a, uh, an airtight seam. Okay? So, so the, uh, the, appli the uh, applications that we've been researching are, there's two, two different systems. One is called a, a, a cubicle scaffolding system, and the other one is, is uh, called a self-constructed trigon, is what I'm calling it, which is a, what this diagram is here. On the, uh, the cubicle scaffolding system, we, we um, came up with a, uh, a standard cube. And this, there's uh, actually several systems that are, that are being researched. Uh, Xerox uh, Park has done some research on, on constructing cubes. Um, so it's, it's not necessarily anything new, except that this is uh, specifically um, applied to architecture in a way that, um, that can cause buildings to be uh, an architectural system, a building element that uh, can can self-construct, and each of these cubes um, has a uh, what we call a, a power tri uh, two power triangles inside that uh, that, are, that consist of uh, three linear act uh, uh, linear actuators that uh, will allow the uh, each of the faces of the cube to be um, extended or opened or positioned um, as needed um, due to the three points of contact. So one is uh, the, the cube can be extended out halfway or at an angle in, uh, in various directions to affect um, either to, to make the, uh, the surface, that is the, uh, the actual volume that the cube takes up um, one and a half times or whatever. And when we, when we put these different, these three different uh, uh, capacities together, then uh, we're, we're able to create a, uh, a situation where groups of these cubes can, can then uh, work in concert with each other to um, climb across its own structure and, uh, and create structure and continue to add to the structure. So, Hypothetically, if we add these, this, uh, this four, we, we consider this, uh, this part of the structure being uh, previously constructed, and we add a group of four cubes. I have a, a quick, this uh, quick animation. It actually, it's not really quick, so we have to um, painfully watch this go through. But, but what it does is that just a, through a series of uh, extending the faces of the cube and pushing the uh, others in the group along it is able to inchworm along this, uh, this existing structure, continually uh, uh, clasping onto the existing structure using, uh, using a, a magnetic link or, uh, um, or um, using a, a screw to, uh, to inchworm and worm itself along and then also uh, turn corners um, you know, what I've, the, uh, it's modeled right now as hydraulic or as a pneumatic. However, um, if this were to be used as a, uh, a space structure, it would have to be uh, a, a, an electric, something electric, which uh, we would probably have uh, uh, maybe a screw, uh, screw rod and then uh, something like that. Of course, we um, I'll, I'll uh, do some additional research on that later. Anyway, so the so the uh, 
um, having these uh, faces come out at an angle, etc., they're able to, to turn corners and deposit themselves at the end of the structure where they need to be um, added onto. What's the scale of these squares? The scale at this point, um, where it's a uh, we're uh, still debating on what's, what's an optimum size. So um, these are actually modeled at uh, maybe a, a 60 centimeters or somewhere around that. However, uh, it might be possible to, to uh, have um, to set it up so that you have uh, multiple. So you have uh, uh, this size, but then you can um, inside of that you can have the double double size. There's a there's a one uh, group that's researching they, they call them fractal robots. I think uh, maybe Sylvana might have heard of this. That uh, and and the, uh, the fractal robots they are using cubes that uh, continually um, it's one half of the previous size so that you can get smaller and smaller and smaller um, as needed. And uh, but I, but we haven't figured out a way of. Um, Applying that quite yet, so we're still wondering what the, the optimum size for this is. Um, the uh, the second one is uh, what we call it. That we're, we're calling a self-constructed trigon. It consists of uh, a series of panels that, that have uh, completely uniform length on the on the sides of the panels, and there's the mechanism is that there's a uh, uh, a revolute uh, actuator on the, on the panel, on each panel that can, uh, and also a linear act actuator that will come and clasp each other and then allow others to to climb over them in such a way that you go from joint to joint and the, uh, the panel will go end over end and climb along the surface. Now this can also work in, in pairs or in groups where you, have, you start out with it's, um, not only triangles, but squares, or as we were talking about in ISIS, you can, you can have um, all sorts of different shapes as long as the, uh, the uh, panel edge is the same. And have them be in groups, have them carry other, other uh, materials or, or uh, other add-on modules or, or uh, plug-in inserts along the structure until you get to, get to place. So in, in other words, if we have a series of square panels, that, um, two square panels connected together can walk across the, uh, the triangles. So, uh, so using this system, you, um, you can create trusses. And uh, as everybody knows um, from uh, elementary school, if you, you take uh, equilateral triangles and, and squares, and you can make an incredible number of uh, different geometries or structure. Um, the other thing is, is uh, a lot of the uh, the panels can be um, maintained, uh, stay in their connected position, and then uh, deployed on site, um, where you just have you open up the, the entire thing, and then, then they uh, they work to configure themselves. This was a uh, a project. We have our uh, designer sitting right over here. Um, from uh, Keio University, um, the students did a uh, uh, a series of spheres um, that uh, can be connected using uh, uh, triangles and squares. And uh, this, of course, I, I can't vouch for the stability of a structure like this in orbit, but they, it's a, it's an interesting little study that the students did. And a, a, stru a structure like this can be uh, assembled uh, automatically using the Trigon system. Um, and, and that's it for me. I'm, I'm, uh, so, I, so I get plenty of time for questions on this one. Yes. yes. Scott? Go ahead. So with the cube one, uh, is, would it be possible for uh, to form a, a larger structure and empty the inside out, so, so to speak? Yeah, so we've considered perhaps having these cubes being able to carry something on the inside as well. And if you do that, um, the, the, uh, the, the two um, power triangles are set up in such a way that there's, that, um, there's uh, space between them so that it keeps the inside completely free. 
except for a, a, a little bit, um, maybe about 20 degrees of, uh, of play whenever the, um, the faces open up. So you have a, a significant amount of space on the inside that these can actually carry something else. And then you can then add other, um, either uh, have it carry something else or have it carry another mechanism or whatever to, a, to its final position and then have that other mechanism start to work. But I think the question he's asking is, is the self-packing system, can you have eight of these form a single cube? And take all the guts out and just have the outside panel? Or... Uh, no, we haven't, we haven't considered that at all. The, uh, we, we did consider taking the, uh, the, the six panels of one cube and uh, if you're and taking that apart so that they're stackable like that, so you don't have to sh um, ship it in the cube form. But those six panels can't assemble themselves into cubes, so they have to be in cubes before they can work. Scott, yes, could you expand upon what are the applications for the cube and the triagon? Yes, um, that's that's a good question. Um, this, uh, okay, this, uh, these two projects are linked in that this uh, particular this panel system is made by the Trigon system. So that, um, because the Trigon system is, uh, is actually, it's, it's not sealable, it's not airtight, but if it is used as a, as a support structure for inflatable, uh, pressure um, <coughs> ladders on the inside, then it will be you'll be able to um, collapse the part that's uh, that's most critical that, that it is holding the air, and then use this uh, this trigon system to assemble spheres or cylinders. Cylinders can easily be be uh, created at using this this uh, trigon system. Now the uh, the cubes it's it's just another the cube is another. Uh, it's work. It, it, it's mostly with my terrestrial architecture research, and uh, it's probably not as useful in space, I guess. But the trigon system, I think, would be the most have the most potential. Yes. Do you envision that the bladders themselves would in some way interconnect, or if it was not a structure, would the bladder already be a single? Shape? Yeah, the, um, we haven't done any studies at all, but um, it's it's conceivable that um, this particular panel right here has a uh, has a, the uh, the hardware for the hatch built into it, and you have the uh, the bladder connected right onto that. So if you have if you have uh, several panels working in pairs, working its way across the, the uh, across the structure, then uh, the folded up uh, inflatable bladder could actually be inserted into one of those panels that's being carried across. And once it gets into its position, with the uh, the trigons putting um, creating a, a spherical structure, then it can inflate inside of that. But of course, we, we haven't gone in. It's just a uh, concept right now, so we haven't done any studies on that. Yes? Yeah, just a comment. It just occurred to me that the same kind of mechanism that allows self-assembly uh, could allow the system to move along. Yes. Uh, in the same way the head bar needs to do. Uh, but you would, not, you would not need an extra kind of system for the mobility itself. And this that reminds me of the, the snake bots, you know, the yes. second mile essential are army of cubes, and you can maybe you can make them to move like inch worms or whatever. The same way you, if you consider those the size of the habitat, it could move it could move along as an inch worm uh, or in some mm -hmm. other way, uh, by, by kind of yeah, Yeah, because in, in indeed these uh, the joints themselves are well this one right here is uh, is, is very stable, but uh, Certain uh, certain types of structures are uh, these uh, 
the, the secret to the system is that you have uh, you have a double axis, and the axis is not based on the joint it's the the, um, the joint itself or the or the line that, where the two panels come together, but the axis for these is offset just slightly, so there's eccentricity in all the joints. And because there's eccentricity in all the joints, then uh, you have, number one, you have the capacity to fold over on itself 180 degrees, 180 degrees, and then uh, you also or, uh, you also have the, the ability to have a little bit of uh, play in that. So, uh, and because of that play, it, um, I think uh, your point is is uh, very good because you can have that um, just a little subtle control and have. Uh, you know, with the, with the collective motion of a lot of these, affect some kind of a motion. <coughs> yes. One thing was a little unclear to me from the picture. Were those linear actuators and moving the cubes? Are they penetrating the volume? So if you have a bladder, conceivably it can be able to reconstruct something or get access, open the side up with the actuators or down. Yeah. In this case right here, the actuators are. Um, in this case, they're completely enclosed within the panel, so that so uh, it's much different from the from the cubes. The cubes have uh, the power triangles that are on the inside. That um, even though they, they leave a lot of the space open, they still uh, um, there is a little bit about 20 degrees or so. You'll have to, you'll cut out on each side because when these when they open up the faces, that's what, that's what you get. But in this case, they're completely there's there's a linear actuator inside here. And then uh, that moves this up and down within this slot. Then, uh, then there's a, uh, a revolute actuator there that, that spins that around. And so since it's completely contained within the panel, then you don't have any, anything protruding from the panel. And uh, it's completely free as it moves across. Now, the space here is large enough to have, you, um, when you're connecting two together, you have uh, uh, they, uh, they nest with each other, so, so the, uh, the clasp of, of one panel will, will nest with the clasp of another, but you have another space here that, uh, that is open and accessible for other panels to come and climb across it, so you have that, that one space open for it to grasp as it climbs across. And, uh, and I think... Uh, um, so I don't know if we're, if we're talking about affecting mobility with this system itself and not having a, 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 another mobility system. Then it comes back to Donna's uh, comment of there's a lot of joints here. And uh, how do you protect all these joints from dust? And that's the big, the big question right now that we, that we need to talk about or handle. Let's see if we can solve that problem. Anybody else have a question? Um, you referred back up into your membrane structure combination, and I'm skeptical about the depth of uh, protection of the shielding. How do you, how do you calculate it? Well, um, the, uh, everything that I've done so far is with, with the, uh, the, the membranes in there is conceptual. So, um, I know that the uh, transhab is uh, it's a good uh, 30 centimeters thick, adding all the, uh, the shielding and then the, the padding, and then, uh, then you have the actual, but the actual bladder itself is, is not so thick. And so in our study, well, we're, just, we're considering that the bladder itself, the airtight barrier, is, is the only thing that needs to be completely uh, pre-integrated. And everything else can be um, jointed and uh, penalized because it doesn't have to be airtight. And that's the big point that we wanted to make in this paper. So, uh, and, and, and exactly how, how thick this has to be will be uh, uh, the next step. <coughs> yeah. That's a good point because in this case right here, when we're talking about the uh, uh, 
So in this case, uh, it's assuming that uh, that these uh, that this is uh, what three and a half meters in diameter, which would would make one of those sides about a meter plus. And uh, but this could actually be then made, created by a bunch of small ones as well. It doesn't. It's it's just, it's a relative. So you can see uh, whatever that optimal scale happens to be. Is that wall has to be a certain thickness to be um, adequate for the radiation shield? Yeah, it has to be Students really wanted to come, and uh, I can just apologize for them. <laughs> I know we have a bunch of students that are here that were able to make it with their papers, but uh, my students uh, just couldn't get funding. Okay, that's money. But what about her, her dreams? What she studied so far? Is she, what did she finish the school yet? Um, yeah, both of the students have graduated, uh -huh. and uh, but they they. Uh, the the space architecture, or this uh, this robotics kit of parts exercise, was not uh, uh, what they majored in. So it was, it was a side exercise that they participated. Curious, what did they major in? Yeah. Uh, well, it, it, it's architecture, but uh, their thesis project was um, something other than uh, directly applying robotics and construction to building. Speaking of robotics, uh, have you given some, some specific thought to the type of motors and the, the actual uh, impos possible robotic implementation of so, some of these, you know, both the cube and the triangle, trigon? Yeah, so, so uh, what I have now is I have, uh, I have the ranges and a uh, little, little bit about uh, you know, some of the torques that are required and things like that. But, uh, of course, depending on how much how much you group these together, um, they will have, that of course, doubles and triples the power that these have to be because they have to carry the weight of other panels. And also, you have a plug in, uh, like a, a plug in uh, hatch with a molded up bladder. And so, you, if, if it starts to carry this kind of stuff, then uh, that's a whole issue that would be part of the next study. And well, what are those optimum, um, what kind of actuators could we get a hold of? What kind of power does it take? Things like that are really the next step. Yes? Uh, were there actually uh, considerations made to get this module on the move about artificial uh, muscles, just the bending and stretching? get this thinning, thinning motion okay. instead of uh, motorized uh, or fundamental beams or so? Yeah, so, so that would be um, a, a matter of what kind of actuators you use. And uh, the, the way to make uh, the, uh, the trigon system work is that it all, all has to be self-contained within the panel itself and then allow that, uh, that revolute actuator to, uh, to swing that back and forth. That's the one that's going to be the most critical right there. And uh, so so that would be a study on, that, that we haven't done yet. What kind of actuators are out there and what, what do we do? What, what is it? What is the optimum size? What does it need to be? That would be a new study. Okay, we'll, we'll give a little 